welcome to the Cigna Check-In, a series based on the findings of our ongoing Cigna COVID-19 impact study, an extension of Cigna's annual 360 Wellbeing Survey, which was launched at the start of the pandemic to research the effect of COVID-19 on people's well-being across the world. Here, we will use the insights from that study to deep dive into the triggers of stress, where they may come from, why stress may be heightened in these unprecedented times, and most importantly, to give you the tools and information you need to succeed in performing stress care check-ins on team members within your company. I'm Patrick Rona, Head of Brand and Thought Leadership for Cigna International Markets, and today I'm joined by Dr. Peter Mills, Medical Director of Cigna Europe, and Paul Lewis, financial journalist and presenter of BBC Radio 4's Money Box. Thank you both for joining. Today we're gonna to talk about financial stress in particular, which as we know is a hugely delicate topic when it comes to employees uh, and indeed the overall state of the business in today's climate. Finances are a key stress trigger at the best of times uh, as they drive company efficiency and they can impact heavily on the well-being of employees. Paul, how is the current global context impacting businesses and how are we seeing them react to this current situation? Well, the global context is dire, isn't it? Um, if you look at almost anything, whether it's inflation or wages or employment, or indeed what the world produces, what we call GDP, gross domestic product, the, the World Bank says that will fall by 5%, or has fallen, I should say, by 5%, and could fall by 8%. And that is a huge drop. I mean, this is devastating for businesses. Consumer spending is down. It's bound to have a devastating effect. And while some businesses are surviving, even the big ones, and in small businesses, I talk to those and they say, I just don't know how I can keep my staff on. I don't know if I can afford to pay them. Now, there are, in this country and many countries, some government schemes to help pay the wages of people who are temporarily uh, not being employed. But those will come to an end. And I think that is when we could see a lot of businesses failing and inevitably a lot of their employees being made redundant. Dr. Mills, uh, another aspect of this is in, in the wake of companies rethinking the organizational structure, perhaps is concerns around job security. Um, can you talk a little bit about how this may impact employees uh, and their stress levels? We're seeing a huge impact of how organizational restructuring and in some cases, a reduction in the size of the workforce uh, is having on people's psychological health. And the key thing here is the uncertainty. Dr. Mills, can you elaborate a little further on how human resource leads and managers might better support uh, management and, and company heads? One of the key things in difficult situations is communication and getting a coherent and simple message out to employees. This is a challenge, but this is where human resources really need to, to help management get the message out to people. Again, the message may be, we don't know what is happening in this particular area, but we will update you once we know. And I could add just from a business point of view that people under stress, people who are, as uh, Dr. Mills was describing, are less productive. So it's in the business interest to sort this out, not just theirs, because productivity is really damaged by having employees who are unhappy and under stress and feel, if I can use the word, unloved by their employer. Can you talk a little bit more about how a, a stress care check-in can make a difference when it comes to addressing financial stress? The important thing about stress and indeed financial stress is, is being open about it. And so I think it's very important for employers to, to take the initiative and for a manager to talk to their employees about these difficult issues. And you know, one way into this is for the manager to admit their own vulnerabilities, to say, oh, this is a worrying time, you know, to open up the conversation so the employee doesn't feel they are alone. So you've got to be non-judgmental, friendly, approachable, and give something of yourself to the conversation. Earlier on, you talked a bit about just the, the act of acknowledging it and making yourself aware of your situation uh, can make a huge difference towards starting to address it. Do you like to expand, expand a little bit on that? 
the key thing is not to hide your financial problems from yourself. There's no point in lying awake worrying about it all night. Cut back on unnecessary spending. Uh, look at how you can perhaps earn a bit more money on the side, apart from your job. Have you got any skills? Have you got things you can sell, for example? Those things can help you enormously. And there's no reason why a manager, or indeed a work colleague, but a manager, can't suggest some of those techniques to their employees. And that will make them seem like not, a, not just someone who cares, but someone who has practical advice, practical solutions, because at the moment, most of the world is going through financial stress. Um, can both of you talk a little bit about some of the techniques or entry points, if you will, for starting a conversation or a check-in on financial stress with, with employees or members of your team? So if you're going to do a stress check-in, if you're going to incorporate it into a, a more general business check-in, I would recommend that you do it on a video chat at the moment. Uh, certainly you can, you can get some of those non-verbal cues while on a video call, which you cannot get on just a plain telephone or worse still, on an email. I think start a general conversation and then talk about your own situation. Maybe you have a, a son or a daughter or a partner uh, or a relative or a friend who is going through financial difficulties. Maybe you're going through them yourself. Talk about other people. Make it seem normal to have financial difficulties and financial stress. Dr. Mills, is there anything else you can add in terms of tools and techniques around perhaps financial stress, but even broader around stress uh, in, in general? There are a lot of good resources available online. So there are some great um, resources uh, that, that focus in on different aspects of our life, be that physical activity, uh, be that sleep. Uh, but the science behind it is, is something called cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT for short. And there are many resources out there that that teach you CBT, which is understanding, okay, um, how do your thoughts impact your emotions? And then in turn, how do your emotions uh, impact your behaviors? Once you understand that, the different elements of your life, it is then possible to start to unpack that and start to do things differently um, so you feel less stressed. That's all we have time for today. Thank you both for joining me. There are many factors around financial stress that have negative impacts on well-being and productivity of your employees. And this is certainly heightened during this time. That's why making sure you perform regular stress care check-ins with your colleagues, team members, or employees is vitally important. For more information on how to perform impactful stress care check-ins, find helpful tools, and the most up-to-date information and insights from our studies, please visit our dedicated hub. I look forward to welcoming you back at our next episode coming soon. Thanks.